All right, welcome to week four, our final meeting today. We're gonna to be talking about reading comprehension, but before we get started, um, we're gonna hand it over to Mrs. Romero to set up our interpretation room. Thanks to those of you that are waiting, we're just gonna be patient for a minute. Go ahead, Mrs. Romero. I'm Jennifer Romero, I'm the translator tonight, so let me just explain how to get into the Spanish interpretation room. Si quieren escuchar esta presentación en español y están en una computadora, abajo van a ver un globo en un momento cuando abra, abramos um, los, las salas de interpretación. Si hacen clic en el globo, next slide. Pueden ver las opciones de English y Spanish y Spanish es español. Next slide. Si está usando su teléfono, abajo va a una, buscar los tres puntos donde dice más. Next slide. Y ahí va a ver language interpretation, que es interpretación de lenguajes. Next slide. Y al hacer clic ahí, van a ver sus opciones. Quieren Spanish. Next slide. Y ya pueden escuchar todo en español. Ahora voy a entrar en la sala de interpretación y acompáñenme si gustan escuchar en español. I'm ready. Okay, we ready to go, Mrs. Alton? Okay, so tonight we're gonna talk about comprehension. Let's take a minute and define that word. It's the ability to remember and understand um, with a heavy emphasis on understand. There, in literacy, there are two types of comprehension, reading comprehension and listening comprehension. As we start, let's take a quick review because you already learned a few things about listening comprehension. If you remember when Mrs. Alton shared a couple of weeks ago about shared reading, she talked about how important listening comprehension is. And that happens when your child is listening to a text or a story, when they're the listener. It's important because we've found out through science, educational scientific research, that listening comprehension is a precursor or precondition to reading comprehension. That means as students learn and grow in their ability to listening, to listen and comprehend, it will transfer to their ability to read and comprehend. This is developed through conversations, having conversations with your child, sharing stories, and also exposure to rich texts. By that, we mean um, texts with lots of vocabulary and interesting words or nonfiction texts with interesting facts and that require some critical thinking. So this week, we're gonna switch over to reading comprehension. And that's your child's ability to read and understand when they are reading the text themselves. We know that whenever we're reading something, it's important that it makes sense. We read to make meaning. So we want to remind our reader to not only think about the letters and sounds, but to be thinking about the ideas within the text. We're hoping that your child will have these light bulbs going off when they're reading, that, that lots of ideas will be going on in their mind at the same time as they're reading and decoding those words. You can see how difficult reading is with these two parts. They're juggling. So tonight, we really want to leave you with three important things to remember when you're reading with your child. I mean, when, I'm sorry, when your child is reading to you. We want to leave you with the idea that help them connect, remember, and understand. Those three things. And we're going to talk about those just a little bit more. Let's start with connecting. It's been known for a long time amongst teachers that it's important when we're um, giving students new learning that we connect the new knowledge to things that they already know, what we call prior knowledge. We want to help them connect those because that helps them remember and understand. 
So it's important that as you're reading with your child, you remind them or help them make those connections. If you look on the other side of the page, it says you model. So you can do this by saying, this book reminds me of, and it might remind you of, of something else you read, another book, it reminds you of something you saw on television. It might remind you of something you, uh, a memory or something that's happened in your life. So you can model these connections for your child. Or you can also ask your child, you can see where it says you ask, does this remind you of anything? Um, does this um, remind you of another book you've read or something else you've read? And um, you can go down the list. Now you don't have to do all of these and don't worry about remembering these because we're gonna put copies of the slides in the resource section in the Google Classroom. The second one, we did connecting. Now we're doing remembering. It's important that your reader can remember what we call the gist of the story. The just means like the big important parts, kind of what happened in the beginning, the characters, the setting, who was in the story, where did it happen? What happens in the middle? It's usually like a problem. And at the end, there's often the solution. What are those big parts of the story? The smaller details, I, I learned to read way before anybody in this meeting learned to read. And a long time ago, it would be like, you know, what was Sally's dog's name? Or what, what was Sally wearing? We know now that those things aren't as important for readers to make meaning. It's more those big ideas. Once again, on the other side of the page, you can see ways you can model. In the beginning of the story, I remember this happening, or you can ask your child, what do you remember happening in the beginning? Or you can talk about, I remember Sally's dog kept, kept getting out. What do you, do you, what do you remember about Sally? Or what, you know, whatever, however, whatever matches the story that you're doing. So remember, don't worry about all the specific ways to say it. Just remember, connect, help your child remember, and then let's look at the last one, understanding. Now, understanding is going beyond just remembering. It's showing you that they really, um, I could just use the word understood the story. So if you look on the model portion, you might say, I wonder why Sally's dog kept getting out because maybe that's a part of the story. Maybe she kept forgetting to shut the gate or so there you can tell that they're really understanding what is happening. You might also want to make sure that if you're if they're confused, they know that's okay. You can model by saying, I was confused when Sally's dog got out. I don't, how did that happen? Let's look back and see. Or you can ask your child, was there any part that you were confused about? Because that's okay. That's a, a part of being a strong reader is to understand when you're confused and when you don't understand. So these three parts, connecting, remembering, understanding. If you can help your child with those three things, that is definitely going to strengthen their comprehension. It's a little bit difficult because there are whole books written on teaching comprehension, and we're trying to take it into just some small steps for you. Just a couple other tips. Keep in mind that you want to start the discussion before you even start reading the book, and I'm going to model that for you in a minute. So before, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. You want to start discussing before your child even starts reading the book, okay? You want minimal interruptions while your child's reading. It's not like shared reading where you're stopping to ask questions because that can confuse your child when they're reading. If they're reading, if they stop to ask a question, that's okay, but you don't wanna keep stopping them. That's for the shared reading or the listening comprehension. This is the reading comprehension where they're reading. Remember, it's a conversation, not a quiz. Um, like I said before, when I was in reading group, when I was younger, it was like, okay, what were they doing? Then what happened? Then who wore this? Then what happened? You, you felt intimidated. We don't want them to feel intimidated. 
We want it to be a conversation. Be sure and take time to model. That means you just kind of, kind of pretend like you have these questions in your mind. You're kind of doing, showing them just like you would show your children how to behave manners. With manners, you're gonna show them how they would comprehend, how they, how they would be thinking. If your child's struggling, if they get to the end of the story and you ask them, what do you remember? And they're like, hmm, or you can tell they don't understand, then just step back a few levels. That's okay until they get to a level where they can decode and understand because that's really when they're reading. That's really what we consider reading. And it's important that you start here. Oftentimes, I get all of the literacy specialists, we get third and fourth graders who read beautifully, flawlessly. And then we'll say, what happened in the story? And they'll be like, ah, I, I don't know. So if we start with this thinking at first and second grade, if we start right here, then th that's gonna be a habit for them. They're gonna understand that they need to be thinking while they're reading. They need to connect, they need to remember, they need to understand. Let's practice together, okay? So this is one of the books that actually I think is in our, in our Google library and it's called Going Camping. So my first one you could see at the bottom, it says connecting. So if you're going to model, this is you with your child, you're not gonna do any of the reading, you're helping them with the thinking, okay? So before you start, you might say, this reminds me of when we went camping. Let's think back of what did we do when we went camping? And take a minute or two just to talk about your camping because it's gonna help them with the vocabulary. What kinds of words would we see in this book? We might see flashlight, we might see sleeping bag. You can talk a little bit about the vocabulary, get them thinking. You could also ask, where do you think they're going camping? Let's take a look at our picture. Hmm. Some people go camping in the mountains, maybe in the desert, maybe at the beach. You could say, I don't think she's going to the beach. At least it's not summer because she looks dressed like she's, it's a little warm and she has shoes on. You can see that you're just, get, you're getting all that thinking going. And then you can say, okay, well, let's get started. I can't wait to hear you read. So your child goes on. Hold on, I'm sorry, my slide's not moving. There we go. So your child reads the book and then at the end, you can just check in, like little check in about what they remembered. What were a few of the things they took on their camping trip? And I know a lot of times in, in, in literacy group, we'll kind of make it a game. Let's go around the table. Who can remember? What did, what did they, let's all see, let's see how many we can remember. And I know for a fact in this book, they took flashlights, bug spray, a tent, sleeping bags, games, apples, and water bottles. I don't know if I got them all, but you can tell I've read this a few times. <laughs> so, but you can go back and forth. Like, what do you remember? I, I remember this, but, but you'll be able to tell because if you ask and, and say, what did they take? They're like, uh, then I would just drop back a couple levels until you find a, a place of uh, where they're comfortable or you can reread it the next day, but before you can remind them, okay, now as you're reading, slow down and think. If you feel like they're reading quickly through the page, you can slow them down at the bottom of the page. Okay, think, now read the next page. That's if they're having, if you feel like they're having trouble. Okay, connect, remember, understand. So, hmm, where did they end up camping? Well, you can tell by the last line, the place we like best is our own backyard. In this book, they actually camped in their own backyard. But I'm telling you, in literacy group, I have asked that question, where do you think they ended up camping? And I've had kids say, at the beach? Hmm, right away, I know they're not understanding. So I know that I need to give them extra support. You can ask, even if you wanna get very fancy, 
what clues did the author give you? Well, they didn't pack clothes. This is how you know they were in their backyard. They didn't bring very much food and they didn't need a map. Dad had said, we don't need a map. So you can, if you want to get very in there, you can do it. Okay, so let's look at nonfiction. Okay, we want to do the same thing with our nonfiction text. So first thing is that connecting. So this book's all about dolphins. So you might start before you read. What do we already know about dolphins? Oh, I know that dolphins like to jump out of the water. I know that dolphins make a lot of noise. Um, I know they can, I don't, oh, let's see. Or you can say, what do you wonder about dolphins? What do you want to know about dolphins? Maybe it'll be in the book. What you're doing is you're activating what they already know so that when they read a new fact, it can connect and they can hold on to it in their memory. So that's our connecting. Now our remembering. Hmm, what are a few new facts you learned about dolphins in the book? You might have to say that because always it'll be like, oh, on YouTube, I learned this. No, what did you learn in the book? Okay, here's our last one. Understanding. What was your favorite picture or fact in the book and why was it your favorite? And not because it was cool or see if they can really give you a valid reason. Or if you look, the next one's kind of a, a question. Why do you think dolphins swim in pods? Or below that I put, or some type of question based on the information in the text. So you can say, hmm, why do they live in pods? And see if your child can pull that information out of the book. If they can't, go back, look it up, talk about it together, but keep in your mind that you might need to go back a level until they're comfortable. And I also forgot something on the last slide. We're still here. We're still here till the end of this week. <laughs> so if, if you read with your child and you notice anything and you want to check in with Mrs. Alton, Mrs. Cook, or myself, send us an email. We're happy to help in any way we can. Oh, I forgot to ask. Mrs. Alton, anything that you want to add? Got it. Mrs. Cook, anything I missed on that? No, you did a great job. You covered everything. Well, I'm just going to back up too because I forgot when I ended. So remember, if you can remember those three things, by now I feel like those commercials where you say the phone number over and over. Okay. Remember, connect, remember, understand. Okay. And if you can help with those three things, your child will definitely benefit. Okay. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to get moving. Let's talk about this week. All right. Retest those sight words if you need to. There's a new activity for in a row. I apologize. This is one of those where you might need more of those little discs that I only gave you two of in your bag, sorry. Um, so you might need to use pasta, M&Ms, Skittles, um, pennies, um, anything from a different game, but you might need a few more little discs to play. Um, there's a mirror, mirror activity. That's something new, all right? I'm hoping everybody got into those wheels. Um, we worked on that last week. Let us know if you're still having trouble with those. You can go back and do those too. For foundation work, the, pull out that phonemic awareness sheet. Keep working on listening, listening and hearing those sounds without print. That's what phonemic awareness is. It's just the sounds without the print. And then you get to play hopscotch this week. That's what that chalk is in your bag. So um, instructions are on the list of games. Um, so if you have any questions, reach out and let us know. So those are the games. For writing this week, it's sentence dictation again. Um, if you remember, we talked about that on week two. So if, um, if you weren't here, the video is in the Google Classroom, or if sentence dictation wasn't for you, you can just do choice, a child's choice off of the menu. Okay, kind of jump through that, but I think you guys are, you guys are pros at that now. If you are not in Google Classroom yet, please reach out. <clears throat> we wanna make sure that before we kind of sign off for the summer that you have access so that you can continue to work for the next month. Um, our program will be officially over by the end of this week, 
but there's no reason you can't just kind of start over and go through it again. That way your child will be working all the way up till school starts. So it's not, it's, it's just a, a suggestion. Okay, so get in that Google Classroom. And also one thing that we wanted to make sure you notice, this is a way to help your child's literacy growth without even kind of opening a book, okay? You're like, what? So in your, in your folder, there should be two papers, learning fun in your committee. They're inside one of the um, sheet protectors and reading rewards in your community. And what we did for learning fun is we scoured Temecula or the nearby area for some low cost, different activities that would just promote your child's vocabulary, science understanding, background knowledge, all those things that help them with their literacy. This, this was updated in the end of May, so we're pretty sure that most of the information is definitely current, but you might wanna call first before you, before you go. Um, but I know that Diamond Valley Lake has a great um, museum, and there's also a really cool pool there too, if you want, if you're hot after you go to the museum. Um, if you've never been to the Harupa Mountain Discovery Center, they have a whole like a place where they can dig for rocks. We've gone there on field trips. There's just some, some really fun things to do. And the reading rewards are incentives and free books and things that they can earn just through reading. You can count any of the reading that they've done for the program for any of the reading rewards. Okay, here we go. Before we do our drawing, that's right. I was gonna ask you, Mrs. Alton, can you share the Google Classroom really quickly? You good? Okay, she's, we're gonna share. I'm actually gonna share two things. Yes. I forgot something this morning. It's why it always better to come to our second show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me one second here. Let's see. Okay. So in, in our Google Classroom, we have a parent survey that we're going to ask you to try to fill out when you have a chance. It's, it's only like five questions and your feedback will really help us if as we make changes to the program for next year. Um, and I'm just going to show you where it's right there at the top of the Google Classroom where it says parent feedback. If you just click on parent survey and click down below. Um, then this whole survey pops out and it asks you some questions. It does ask how many meetings you attended. That's not, that's for our knowledge. We want to make sure the meetings were useful. If you missed a meeting and you watched a recording, you can count that too, but we're not, we're not keeping track for any kind of like, we're just keeping, it's all for us. So we know kind of what helped um, and what you found was important in the program. Um, the other thing I want to look at in the Google Classroom, Mrs. Alton, if you can scroll, go back to, yeah, just go right there and then scroll all the way down. Keep going all the way. I know. But Might have to I pop have out to, of there. I just Might have to have move to open a, up again. I have to move a few things around. Hang on. Okay. So one of our literacy specialists started a YouTube um, channel and she's reading books aloud. So if you're driving in the car, you're, and you don't have time to do that shared reading, um, your child can listen to the book and you can just click. And if, you, if they don't have headphones on, then you can hear the story and you can talk about it as you go. This is for that shared reading. I know, hang on, I'm having trouble. For some but reason, it, I, can't, I can't scroll down my, oh, there we go. Classwork? I got it, I got there it. There we go. It's all the way, keep going all the way to resources. Yep, there we go. There we go. And, the, and um, Miss Dana's story time, if you click on that, it will take you, there you go. We don't have to go anymore, don't worry, Ms. Sultan, into, into that. So we, and that's free. And um, just something else we wanted to um, offer you. And also tomorrow morning, it will say comp comprehension strategies for parents. And the slides from what we talked about today will also be in the resources. Okay, let's head back. If you'll stop sharing, then I'll start sharing again. Mrs. Okay. Alton, I'm gonna come back here and make sure, don't forget to fill out your calendar, okay? And 
you know, even if you didn't get the four days or the five, what the five days, even if you got two days a week, fill it out, turn it into your literacy specialist when you come back to school so that we can recognize you and keep working. You'll notice there's July and August on that, on that um, calendar too. So we wanted to remind you of that. Oh, and any parent, I think I said this, mm -hmm. any parent that fills out the program survey will get an ice cream coupon for Mariposa, Mariposa ice cream in Temecula for the parents, okay? And we have an incentive for our students who stay for the student meeting. And I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Mrs. Alton for our drawing. Mrs. Alton, let's just do, just gonna do one tonight, I think. Okay, all right, Who so. Is our lucky winner. And this is for in and out is our. Oh yeah, in and out yeah, this week. I mean. for, for our parents. Let's grab and Laura Hernandez. Laura, Laura Hernandez. Hernandez. Okay. Yes. Congratulations. Exciting. Congratulations. That's, yeah, that's Sophia and Veronica's mom. Yes. yes. Okay. So even if you didn't win the drawing, remember that any student that comes to our student meeting is going to get their certificate this week. It's BJ's. I'm going to send you a certificate to BJ's. Hmm. And any parent that fills out the survey is going to get a coupon for the ice cream at Mariposa um, Ice Cream in Temecula. So I am going to say thank you very quickly. And thank you, parents, for all of your support. I know Mrs. Alton, Mrs. Romero, Mrs. Cook, and myself are so thankful for your consistency and um, just great feedback. So I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Cook, and it's time for the kids. I'm Mrs. Gonna, Alton, hey, did anything else you wanted? Sorry. I'm going to bring I? Jenny. I'm going to bring Mrs. Romero. Should I bring you back in, Mrs. Romero? Yeah, let's bring Mrs. Yeah, Romero okay. back out. And well, let me see if I can figure out how to do that, though. Hold on. <laughs> if not, she's stuck in there for a couple of days. <laughs> there we go. La manera de sacarme. There okay, go. I'm back. Okay, we're going to say goodbye to our parents. Thank you so much, kids. Don't go anywhere. Mrs. Cook is ready for you. Don't go anywhere. Hi, you guys. It's our last meeting together. I'm so glad you guys are here tonight. You guys are so cute. I love when you turn on your cameras and I can see your cute faces. Love it. So today, you guys, um, Mrs. Albertoni was talking about comprehension to your parents. And that means understanding what you're listening to or if you're reading it on your own. So tonight when I read one of my favorite stories called Llama Llama Red Pajama, we are going to connect, we're going to remember, and we're going to understand, okay? So you guys are going to have to really pay attention because I'm going to be reading to you. And if you want to, you guys can help me read, okay? Because there's a lot of rhyming in this story, okay? I'm going to share my screen. And you guys are really good at this now. So when I have some questions, I'm going to have you use your chat box to either put A, B, C, or D to answer your question. Because that's going to tell me if you're remembering what's going on and you understand. Okay? So let me share my screen. Where is it? There it is. Sound. Share. Here we go. Okay, so this is our listening comprehension because I'm going to be reading. Remember, if you guys have your, um, your, if you're muted, you could stay muted, but you can help me read it, okay? Because if we all read at the same time, it'd be kind of crazy. So if you want to read with me, just mute yourself and read along, okay? Here we go. And there's lots of rhyming. So first of all, we're going to connect. So this is called Llama Llama Red Pajama. I just want to see with your hand. How many people have read the story or ha have had it read to you? Raise your hand. Okay, how many is it a brand new story? You've never heard it. Okay, I see some hands up. So I'm gonna connect with this and I think you guys can too. Llama Llama wears red pajamas. So think about you're gonna connect when you guys go to bed, you wear pajamas or some people call them PJs. You wear different clothes when you go to bed. So this is just called Llama Llama Red Pajama because the little llama's wearing what color pajamas? Red. Here we go, by Anna Dudney. Okay, Llama Llama Red Pajama reads a story with his mama. If you can connect, maybe you read a story with your mom or your mama. There they are, they're so sweet. 
I can't read this. Hold on. Sorry, my thing's in the way. Mama kisses baby's hair. Mama llama goes downstairs. Hmm. Llama llama red pajama feels alone without his mama. How many can connect when your parents say good night and they leave you alone? Do you feel alone when they leave you? Maybe you're connecting to that. Maybe you feel that. I see some hands up. You're connecting to his feelings. Okay. Oops, am I missing a page? Hold on, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, hold on. Mama's at the kitchen sink. Llama llama red pajama calls down to his llama mama. Why is he calling down? Mama said she'll be up soon. Baby llama sings a tune. He's waiting for his mama. She said, I'll be up soon, baby. Llama llama red pajama waiting, waiting for his mama. He's like, come on, mama. He's at, he wanted her to bring a drink up. He's like anything to get her up there. Mama isn't coming yet. Baby llama starts to fret. Hmm, I see this word right here. Mama isn't coming yet. Baby llama starts to fret. Oh, here's our first question. Here we go. Baby llama starts to fret. What do you think fret means? That's a, a different word. Do you think baby llama starts to get mad? Maybe, that's A. Baby llama starts to worry. That's B. Baby llama is happy. Or baby llama wants to fall asleep. What do you think fret means? To become happy, to fall asleep, to worry? What do you think? Put it in your chat box. If you think fret means to get mad, put A. If you think fret means to worry, put B in the chat box. If you think fret means to become happy, put that in your chat box. Um, and, oh, I see a lot of people are filling it out. Let's see. Ooh, and if you guys missed it, it's okay. So we're gonna go over that. I see lots of answers. So baby llama starts to fret. What do you think it means? Some people put to get mad and some people put to worry. He's probably getting a little mad, but fret really means to worry. He's starting to worry about his mama. Like, where is she? So fret means to worry. Good job, you guys. So that means we're understanding. Okay, llama llama red pajama softly for his mama. <laughs> mama llama hears the phone. Baby llama starts to moan. He is getting very impatient. Have you guys ever felt like that? You call your mom or dad and they're not coming right away. You're starting to get frustrated. Llama llama red pajama listens quiet for his mama. What do you think he's thinking? Like, is she coming up yet? What is Mama Llama doing? Baby Llama, I can't read the book. Baby Llama is wondering what she's doing. Llama Llama, red pajama, hollers loudly for his mama. Remember he was worried? Now it looks like he's getting mad. He's hollering loudly. He's getting mad that his mom's not coming up right away. Baby Llama, stomps and pouts, baby llama jumps and shouts. He is going crazy in his room waiting for his what? His mama. Llama llama red pajama in the dark without his mama. Eyes wide open, covers drawn. What if mama mama, mama llama's gone? There's that fret, he's starting to worry again. <gasps> llama llama red pajama weeping wailing for his mama will his mama ever come mama llama run 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 how do you think mama feels now he's screaming up there she's running around my baby my baby baby llama what a tizzy sometimes mama's very busy was she ignoring him Nope, she's just doing her work downstairs or in another room. 
please stop all this llama drama and be patient for your mama. Mm, he wasn't being patient. Can you guys connect to that? Have you ever not been patient and you learned a lesson to be patient? Why did it take mama a while to get up to llama's room? Okay, here's where we're gonna use the chat box again. Why did it take mama a while to get up to llama's room? A, she was sleeping. B, she was taking a bath. C, she was busy. Or D, she was reading. Why did it take mama a while to get up to llama's room? Put it in the chat box. Do you think she was sleeping? Put A. B, she was taking a bath. C, she was busy. Or D, she was reading. I'm going to check the chat. Shelby, we see you with your fingers. We see you. Excuse me, teacher. I can't. I don't know how to type the words. Oh, that's okay. You could either put a letter there or you could hold up a piece of paper or you could... You could tell us what did you put? Okay. So a, B, C, or D? C. C. And a lot of people put C. You're right. Why did Mama, Mama, why did Mama, Mama, why did Mama, mama take a mama. while to get up to Lama's room? C. She was busy. She was doing dishes and things like that. She was doing a lot of stuff, getting her phone calls in. She was busy and he just needed to be patient. Bryce, did you have a question, hon? No? Okay. You guys are doing so good with comprehension, understanding what you're reading, you're remembering. <gasps> Little Llama, don't you know, Mama Llama loves you so. Mama Llama is always near, even if she's not right here. Llama Llama Red Pajama gets two kisses from his mama, snuggles pillow, soft and deep, Baby llama goes to sleep. Oh, I love him. Okay, so we're gonna find your chat box. And if you don't have a chat box, remember you could write it down, hold it up, or you could kind of do it with your hands. You can help, or you could tell me. So just raise your hand if you can't write it in your chat box. How do baby llama feel when mama leaves at the beginning of the story? Ooh, we have to remember this. How does baby llama feel when mama leaves at the beginning of the story? He feels tired, he feels happy, he feels alone, he feels angry at the beginning of the story. Can you guys remember? Oh, I see the chat box going off. You guys are doing fabulous. Okay, and the per who couldn't write in the chat box? Was it Jackie? You guys, okay. So the answer is he feels alone at the beginning of the story. You guys did really good. You guys remembered. Remember, he's like, I'm alone. I need a drink. And he started calling for his mom and whimpering. Good job, yeah, you guys. Shelby, Shelby, we see. Yeah, we see those. Oh, fingers. Shelby. Okay. Stop. Sorry, I couldn't see Shelby there. But she's doing, she's like one, two, three, right, Shelby? Okay, Shelby, Shelby. that works perfectly. Good job. Perfect. Did you have three up for he felt alone? Awesome. Okay, next one. Mama was so, mama was so busy. So baby llama needed to learn what? There is a big lesson to learn in this. We're connecting with this too. So baby llama needed to learn to be kind. That'd be A or one. B, happy. C, bossy. Or D, patient. What did baby llama need to learn? Put it in your chat box or hold up your fingers. I love how you guys are interacting. You guys are definitely doing an amazing job. You guys got it. Yes, baby llama needed to learn to be patient. He wasn't being patient. He was throwing a tizzy llama drama. Okay, we how did baby- hold up. Sorry, I was telling Miles, we saw him hold up his sign. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for thanks for reading my eyes. How did baby llama feel when mama leaves at the end? end of the story felt alone at the beginning how does he feel at the end he feels tired a he feels happy b he feels alone c or d he feels hungry how does he feel at the end of the story
You guys are doing fabulous. At the end of the story, he feels tired. You guys have that. And don't you think he's kind of happy too? Like he's like, oh, he's all snuggled in. But he was, he was tired. Good job, you guys. What did baby llama learn at the end of the story? This is a really good lesson. What do you learn at the end? A, even if mama isn't right here, she is always near. B, it's fun to jump on the bed. C, it is not good to eat in bed. Or D, it is fun to go to the beach. What did baby llama learn at the end of the story? Can you guys remember? Put it in the chat box or hold up your fingers. You guys are on fire. I see lots of answers in there. Yes. Okay, what did baby llama learn at the end of the story? You guys are correct. A, even if mama isn't right here, she is always near. Awesome. And there's a little llama right there. That's a real llama. Have you guys ever seen a real llama? Do you think this llama wears red pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if he did. You that guys are really good, you guys. You're listening, you're connecting, you're remembering, and you're understanding. That's what comprehension is. And if you don't have that, then why read, right? So we always want to remember what we're reading and connect it. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm going to miss you guys on Tuesday nights. I know you guys are all at other schools. Oh, what are they oh, getting? So tonight, everybody that's on my screen right now, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Put your name in the chat. If you can't put your name in the chat, don't worry. Let's see who I know. Shelby, I wrote you down. Don't worry. And Miles, I wrote you down. Don't worry if you can't put your name in the chat. Okay. But everybody else, put your name in the chat and I'm going to send this to you in the mail. I like BJ's. That's one of my favorite places. Okay. We want to thank all of you for coming. I don't know, Mrs. Cook, Mrs. Alton, if you wanted to say anything else. Um, we, you guys were so fun. It was great to get together. Don't stop reading this summer. Keep working. Turn your calendar in to your That's reading teacher so mm -hmm. that we can give you a reward too when you go back to school. All right. All right. Nice we're back, you guys. So proud so of you. Goodbyes. Keep up the good work, you guys. Awesome put job. Put your name in the chat if you can. Yeah, good make job. sure to put your name Can't in the chat. Excuse me? Yes, Bryce. Um, so I read it. Um, tomorrow we're going to Colorado. Oh, well, we're glad you were here today. We're glad you didn't leave yet. Have a great trip. Okay. Thank you. And, um, but we're getting up at six o'clock. It's going to be fun. Early. Oh, Early. Four o'clock, actually. Ooh, you'll have to sleep in the car. Yeah. All right. Have a safe trip, Bryce. Bye. Have a really everybody. good summer, you guys. Keep Bye, reading. Bye, Bryce's cute sister. Bye, everybody. Aiden and Jace, keep reading, Jackie. Good job, you guys. Have a great summer, you guys. The rest Have a really of the good Cheers. summer. Elise. Is that Elise? Goodbye, Elise. Bye, guys. Bye, Jace. Bye, Bye Kaden. Bye, Jackie. Bye, everybody. Have a good Bye, summer. Curtises. Keep reading, okay? Bye, Miles. All right, you guys, make sure your name's in the chat. Okay. Bye, you guys. There they go. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. welcome. Thank you for coming. All yeah. right.